a telco with less subscribers, less size and less revenue was chosen to deploy Malaysia's second 5G network. Last Friday, the MCMC announced that U-Mobile is the winner of the second 5G network bid. To recap, Malaysia currently has just one 5G network called Digital National Berhad and all your telcos like Maxi, Cellcom, DG, U-Mobile, TM and Yes 5G are using them to roll out 5G services to consumers. In May last year, the current government decided that Malaysia needs to transition from a single hosted network to a dual 5G network model. In short, DMB will no longer be at a monopoly and there will be a second 5G network to provide infrastructure competition. And of course, with competition, the idea was to accelerate network rollout, innovation and ultimately, consumers can enjoy better prices and services. And when U-Mobile was announced as the winner for the second 5G network bid, everyone was surprised because Cellcom, DG and Maxis were considered as the forerunners and here's why. Building a second 5G network is a huge deal and you want to appoint someone who can roll it out quickly and has the financial means to do so. Logically, a tackle with more towers and more subscribers and revenue will be likely the more qualified candidate to roll out the second 5G network. At the moment, U-Mobile claims to have more than 9,000 sites and they currently claim to have over 9 million subscribers as of 2023. As a comparison, Second DG has 25,000 sites combined after the merger and it aims to have 18,000 5G ready sites by the end of next year as part of its modernization and integration exercise. And no question about it, Second DG is currently the largest mobile telco in Malaysia with 20.2 million subscribers. Meanwhile, Maxis has over 11,000 sites and they have 12.7 million subscribers. And interestingly, when MCMC announced U-Mobile as the winner, it mentions that U-Mobile is able to work with other telcos to implement the second 5G network. This somewhat seems to imply that U-Mobile needs help to roll out the second 5G network. And when it comes to revenue, Second DJ and Maxis are definitely stronger because of their larger customer base. So financially, these two giants have the upper hand when it comes to funding the second 5G network. And of course, there's also the issue about shareholding as U-Mobile is practically half owned by Singapore-based Singapore Mobile Investment Private Limited. And U-Mobile did say that they will reduce its foreign majority shareholding down to 20%, but it's not clear if this is a directive by the MCMC. And speaking of MCMC, they issued a response last night to explain why U-Mobile was picked over the other players. To summarize, they said that they have taken several factors into consideration before announcing the winner. Besides the business and technical plans, they also look at customer complaints and satisfaction records. And there's also consideration on the performance in carrying out other infrastructure initiatives such as USB projects like Jindera Fast One and also other 4G upgrade initiatives. And some have pointed out online, obviously a tackle with less subscribers will have less complaints compared to big giants like Cellcom and DG. And what's interesting is that Jindela performance was mentioned as one of the factors leading up to the decision. Firstly, if you look at the final report for Jindela Phase 1, Maxis has completed the most base station upgrades and is the only telco to have completed its 4G new Towers KPI. And you can check this out on the Jindela final report for Phase 1. And interestingly, it pointed out USB projects. And for those who don't know, USB projects are funded with funds from the MCMC which they gather from cuts from the telco's revenue. And these funds are meant to fund projects in underserved areas, like for example, Ulu places with poor connectivity. So if the second 5G network is going to be 100% privately funded, is it fair to use the performance of a USP funded project as a criteria to choose a second 5G network? And ultimately, what's the weightage for these various criteria in order to choose the winner? Logically, you want to tackle with the most 5G ready sites and strong financials to fund such a massive project. Ultimately, if we really want to have a dual 5G network model, the reality is that we need to have two networks that are sustainable, and that's very important. If U-Mobile is the only telco on one side, how will it compete with DMB with Second DG, Maxis, TM, and YTL on one side? And if U-Mobile has it their way with Second DG and TM on the second network, well, that's not fair to DMB, right? Because that only leaves Maxis and YTL on the other side, on the first network. This whole issue is expected to be discussed in Parliament today, and the government needs to be transparent and explain why 